the short-lived fad of young adult dystopian films that came and went like Sam Worthington has finally had a second contender reach the finish line, Maze Runner, The Death Cure. So The Maze Runner has returned for its third and final entry, and I give Dylan O'Brien props for coming back after what seems to have been a pretty serious incident that had him out of filming for a long time. It's very unfortunate that it happened, but one thing I can say is it doesn't seem to have actually negatively affected the film in any way that I could see while watching it. And it's also a shame that it derailed the release of the film by about a year because people are just sort of over the whole young adult thing now. Hunger Games came out and that greatly popularised the entire thing and people were pretty into Hunger Games. Divergent and Maze Runner, less so, but I'd say people are a little bit more into Maze Runner than Divergent because this one was actually allowed to finish its uh, series of movies. Regardless, unlike The Hunger Games or Divergent, The Maze Runner had the common decency to not arbitrarily split its adaptation of the final book into two movies. What this has allowed for is a relatively satisfying end to a very uneven trilogy of films that still exists with all of the flaws that the other ones had but there's enough going on here to just about keep everything glued together for me. I can 100% see people walking into this movie and coming out of it really not enjoying it. Completely get that. I can also see people going in especially if you like the first two Maze Runner movies you're going to be all over this. It, it, it's more of what you want and probably a bit better too. I think the general consensus is just going to be it's sort of a it's a film that exists. There's nothing hateful about it, but there's nothing to really like or love either. It just sort of comes in somewhere in the middle and is relatively enjoyable. I can't be too enthusiastic about really anything. The bottom line is, and this is something that's plagued the Maze Runner since day one, and especially with that sequel, The Scorch Trials, that was bad. The Maze Runner series straight up has bad characters. They are all pretty sucky, and Dylan O'Brien has a few moments and it's not his fault, it's just the way he's been written. There's just nothing here that makes me care about any of them on any level. And it really doesn't help when the overall events going on in the film have very little interesting context and just no weight to them. The premise being that Dylan O'Brien's character, Thomas, and all the other kids from the maze, immune, and you know, just people they've gotten along with them are taking the fight to Wicked Stronghold. Wicked being the big bad corporation in this pretty stupid name. I think there was potential here. I think the first movie set up a story quite nicely. I think they had some interesting sci-fi concepts in the first half of that film. And then what we ended up with at the end was a big sort of cliffhanger setup for these at least two really interesting sequels that could have expanded on these concepts that had been put into the film. But they just it just doesn't feel like they were very well thought out. Nothing really makes sense. All the reasons were given for why anything in this world has taken place just doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't even make sense. It just, to me, they're plot holes. And there's probably a way you could um, craft a story around them. You could be like, oh, they do this because this, this, this. But they haven't actually explained it. And I've sat and thought about it. And maybe it's in the books, but I'm not seeing much of it here. You have to infer a lot of it. And... That sort of sets you up for the general attitude you're going to need to have in this film, which is you're not actually going to get much of any depth or worth. You're just going to be along for something of a ride. And it does sort of qualify as a ride, despite pretty bad characters, awful plot holes and story beats, and just a general feeling of the whole experience being very stupid. There is technically enough going on in this film despite its fairly lengthy runtime which i don't often say to keep the viewer relatively engaged there's at least something happening in the brain even if it is just spectacle whereas in the hunger games mockingjay part one for example because of the split into two movies for that book there's very little going on and it's very boring there's explosions action some scenes of tension and some humor that i enjoyed but again, it all just serves to be just enough to keep you in the cinema, in the room. Hardly a glowing endorsement, but being over two hours long, I have to give it credit in saying that I was never bored. And because of the way it's paced, I was able to sort of look past these incredibly stupid moments, character decisions, this horrible, horrible writing that's permeated the entire series, filled with cliches and trope after trope after trope. It's better in this one than it was in the second one, but the writing is terrible. Despite some of that nonsense, I personally was able to sort of keep with this. 
and it was okay. That said, a few more complaints. I really don't think any of these movies went into the world hard enough. This world doesn't feel real to me, despite the fact that it has something very interesting in concept. And I'd definitely say part of that is okay, because these movies are made for young adults. They don't need to have intense violence or, or sexual themes, or, or they don't have to be especially down-to-earth and realistic. But I still think there's more you can do to actually make the world feel, one, lived in, because this is meant to be a post-apocalyptic world, part of generating that theme is that you need to make it seem like people were once here and were once happy on some level. Maybe not happy, but at least a realistic interpretation of what a world could be like, something that interweaves with different aspects. This just sort of feels plot there, and technically they do show evidence of life, but I don't want evidence. I want, like, feelings. I want to actually believe it. I don't want to feel like these things were put here just to convey that belief to me. But even the current world doesn't really have any interesting themes. I feel like they, in principle, have some, and they tried to put in some black and white areas um, with respect to the organization that is wicked. Um, I think they had ideas there, but they don't really come to fruition. The whole series, and it's still in this movie, which is why I keep referencing the whole series, is a general sense that everything was sort of thrown together with very little planning. There wasn't really much thought put into it as a cohesive piece. You see ideas come, you see ideas go, you see ways out situations that are extremely contrived. It's as if someone thought, oh, this is a really good idea. Oh, but it doesn't really fit with everything else. Oh, but it's a really good idea, we'll keep it. With that said, I'm gonna to have to give Mage Runner, The Death Cure, a six out of 10. I will admit that is quite a flimsy score, but I just can't deny that I was somewhat with it the entire time. I can hardly ever go and confidently tell anyone it was good. But it was a film. That said, if you are actually into the Maze Runner movies, I think you're going to really enjoy this. So take that as is. I think that pretty much wraps it up. So goodbye. I need to think of a fucking outro for these things.